recording. Welcome to right. the Ejects Podcast. My name's Vicky Kitty. Hi, my name is uh, Cash Dog. My name is Zach. You're bald? You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a wig. Oh, it's, uh, okay, you know what? Me. I'm going to throw our completely planned conversation off just a little bit. I'm here for a tirade about how the media projects bald people. They're always the villain. Dr. Evil. Thanos. Galactus. Kingpin. 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 They're all oh bald. Oh my god. What is this bald slander? Name a single good bald person in any form of media. Esam? True. <laughs> He's the Thanos of Smash. He plays Pikachu. What are you guys talking about? Oh, you have a. You make a fair point. You make a fair point. Ah, uh, man, you're right. I honestly can't think of any... Well, maybe there's someone in, like, I don't know, maybe Lord of the Rings? Dude, even, even Dr. Evil, who has the word evil in his name, is bald. They, Dr. Evil. They are slandering evil. bald people. And wait, I wait. Is it, I, I know there's one of the 12 dwarves in Lord of the Rings who's, like, bald, who rolled with, like, Gandalf and, you know, uh, Prince of Thorin. Do you have a I, name? I, one of the bald I forget dwarves. his name. There are so many dwarves, I'm not going to remember that shit. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, bald characters, the bald characters that aren't evil are super forgettable. I'm just saying this is bald slander and I hate it. Wait, what about the heavy... I was about to say the heavy from TF2, but like, he's a mercenary. <laughs> so it's like a 50-50 draw there. <laughs> so now... Whatever, at least you don't have to worry about, you know, wearing a wig cap or anything like that. You can just go straight into whatever you want to cosplay, whatever you want to put on your head. That... <laughs> Small victories, I guess. Small victories. Welcome so, to the podcast, y'all. <laughs> welcome to the, welcome back to our first episode after this big break with our right. first guest star, Vicky Kitty. Do you want? I thought it was me, him? bitch. <laughs> you, know, you want to tell him about yourself, Vicky? Give give a little uh, information for those who may not know. Yeah, uh, I'm an esport commentator. I cover games like Smash Brothers, Apex, Overwatch, Pokin, um, and I'm looking to do more this year. But yeah, I do some streaming sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, also commenting. Right. Yes, yeah, sometimes, but mostly focusing on casting more than anything, and looking to have some big plans this year. So it's going to be exciting. We we actually have a uh, a question from the audience that I got ahead of time. Oh. Uh, because I forgot about that until last second, too. Uh, our guest, our, our viewer, Yip Schoon, uh, wants oh. to know, how do you do, or, or what do you do to prepare for your casting when you do something like Apex or something like that? So what really helps me out is the fact that I don't cast games that I don't play. Um, so I could speak a lot and bring my own experiences into the cast. Obviously, it's not going to be at the level where I, I play professionally since I can't juggle being a professional esport player as well as a caster on top of it all. I prefer the casting aspect because I get to learn a lot by watching different perspectives. But I bring a little bit of myself into every cast too. So when it comes to preparing for a lot of these other casts, I usually write my notes recapping on things that have happened already, what I've already covered, um, individual personalities for some of the players that I want to build storylines for. It's harder when it comes to team-based games but because of the fact that I have my experience from playing the game itself, there are some things that you know to look out for that make it easier. It's basically filling out the skeleton that you already know has been able to be built up for the cast. Well, and I, I also right. heard that in, in the game that you started casting, Smash, you're like a, a number two Kirby in the world or something like that? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let number Komoda hear you there. Don't let Komoda <laughs> hear you. Komoda's the beast at I, playing Well, Kirby. I said number two. And you didn't was number, well, well, because I immediately thought of Komoda. If you're trying to imply yourself in any capacity, <laughs> you aren't even in that. In that, I was argument. gonna say I thought, I thought number two was Supergirl Kells. No, I, just I me. Don't know. I've I've not watched I, Smash in a while. I I I think Supergirl Kells and both Kiwi both have a really strong Kirby. Um, but right. they have way better characters that they that they could play. Yeah. True, um, true. So that's that's our only guest question, and then I think Drew had a question for you, and then we've got a uh, game. Actually, yeah, I had uh, two questions for you. Uh, first one being, uh, how'd you realize that commentary was, like, your thing? How'd you realize this is something you really enjoy doing? Um, it was an accident. 
really because I, I kind of just got pulled into the casting booth at Versus Gaming Center, and I was like, okay, well, <clears throat> to me, the logic behind casting was talking about a game that, again, that I already play, but very much enjoy, but from a different perspective. And right. as a caster, you see the gameplay in a completely different light versus when you're actually hands-on competing. There's so many emotions and nerves behind competing that I just don't experience when I'm in front of a camera and talking about the game. So my mindset behind it was like, I'm just talking about a game in front of me with a friend or just vibing and talking about the game in an analytical point of view that was right. my approach to it at the very start and that's what made it very enjoyable for me so it was kind of just like i wasn't nervous or anything like that i just like talking a lot period so it was it just worked so well because i'm talking a lot but also talking about something that interests me which i could do forever so how all do right you, how do you keep unbiased when it's you know your, your friends up there competing for, for first place in this tournament. Or, or oh, and I'm commentating. I'm I'm completely biased. I, if my friend's up there, I'm just like, hey, the other guy's trash. Anyways, watch him mess up this combo. <laughs> because, okay, so it was definitely a learning process. There's a lot of things, actually, that I learned to do that I didn't know right off the bat or naturally, like how to give your co-caster space, they, how to feel them out. It's kind of like feeling out an opponent in tournament, except you're feeling out the way that your co-caster approaches their commentary. Or do they like to talk a lot? Some cast there's a there's a conversation that I've had with an Overwatch actually when we were talking about this back in the day where usually you could tell when there's a caster that likes to take the wheel that likes to be the one to steer every conversation. Now if you have two casters that are like that, one of them has to step down or else you're constantly stepping on each other's toes. So feeling out the type of co-caster that you have is extremely important, but it comes with experience because you don't know other types of commentary or approaches or styles without being exposed to it so that was one thing that i had to learn while approaching casting and then when it comes to bias that was the other thing that i learned because when i first started i actually my first big tournament was a regional in florida so i knew a lot of people from the different regions in florida and south florida came through with like the biggest car so i obviously had to try to cut it back a bit with the bias because nobody wants to look back on their vods and hear a caster like being very clearly biased and not talking about the cool things that that player is doing so i learned how to appreciate good gameplay just for what it it is whether you're my homie or not if you're my homie you're getting slapped i'm gonna say you're getting slapped you know i've done it before yeah. so and then you had another question drew and the other question was oh ah oh who's your favorite apex legends character oh man that's a good one um my favorite so my favorite one isn't even my main my main is bloodhound my favorite apex okay. legends character has to be it has to be Gibby. Gibraltar. Gibby? I, I love Gibby. I love his voice line. Oh, I, was, I, I was about to say, I heard Gibby, and the first thing I thought was Icar. I was like, wait, what? Y'all call him Gibby? Oh, oh I mean, there, so that's another thing. People call him Jibby, but I I literally learned the game calling him Gibby. Like, that was the comms that everybody had whenever it came to me learning that game. So I've always called him Gibby, and I think about Icarly, too. So it just, and to me, I love it. I would call him Gibby, like, from Icarly. But his voice lines no are idea. amazing. He is, his whole backstory is great. I just like that character a lot. And he was my OG main. He was the character I learned how to play the game with. I have not picked up that game since Octane dropped. It's been it's oh been that God. long. That's like All right. you don't play the game. <laughs> it's, been, it's been forever. I need to pick it back up. Okay. It's a very good game. I love that game. I'm actually playing a lot of Halo at the moment. Oh sweet. Yeah. Uh favorite like, map. I, said, I don't play I don't play games. Or I don't cast games that I don't play. I was gonna say you plan on uh casting some Halo soon? Yeah, that sounds maybe, awesome. Maybe I, I, I would like to at the moment though. Okay, so this is my first Halo game that I've ever played because I grew up as a PlayStation kid. So oh, well, okay. Well, everybody was on that <laughs> was on that uh, Halo grind back in the Xbox days. I was playing Modern for two, Modern for three, etc. So All I was right. more into like Black Ops and and Modern Warfare and those games that had been coming out at that same time. Um, so this is my first Halo game that I get to experience, and I'm having a fun time like apex molded me through the chaos and then i'm just like taking all of that energy into halo and it feels like a breeze like it feels like it's not as difficult but i'm enjoying myself because i could see the small intricacies behind it okay i got a follow-up question since this is your first halo uh how, how do you feel about driving the cars in that game 
Oh, I've like thrown myself off the map. I don't even bother. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know what? It's not in competitive play, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it, it, look, I, I know, I, I just completely understand because it, it's, it's difficult for some reason. It's, I've, it's just like, it's like I can't. I learned. I'm like, I can't drift for, for the life of me. So, I've, you know I've got a question for both of you guys. So, oh, so during quarantine, there were kind of like uh, three big games that really popped off. You, you had. Fall Guys, you had Among Us, mm -hmm. and you had Phasmophobia. Out of those I would, three... I would say a few other games, too, though. Animal Crossing was another one because it but, came but out they, in the... They pet, popped you know, off for, them. for like, a month, though, right? The, these three kind I of guess, yeah. spanned, like, four-month periods. Which Not was... even four-month periods. Among Us still... And Valorant. Valorant came out, too, in April of 2020, I recall. I, I thought Valorant I... was before. Was it? I thought I could have sworn Valorant was before. Like I remember I, back when Valorant had a beta. I think it was a little bit before the I, pandemic, but I could be wrong. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure Valorant was before. It was June twelfth. It's June second, twenty twenty. Oh, I, so I don't it know. was in the middle of the pandemic. But obviously, Valorant's on that list. But specifically for this question, out of those three, uh, Fall Guys, Among Us, and Phasmophobia, which one do you want to see a comeback, if any? Because Phasmophobia, I, in my quest, in my opinion. I prefer Phasmophobia as well because I love horror games. I also just love being scared. But I know that Phasmophobia has a niche. So if I could predict which game could make that second wave comeback, I have to say Fall Guys because Fall Guys just absolutely blew up. Like, I could see Fall Guys being that game. But personally for me, for what I would want, it'd be Phasmophobia. Because but I'm a I'm a sussy little baka and I want Among Us to come. Oh, back. this guy! <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't, Do, I don't. Okay, but hey, our here, goon, okay our goon sessions at two in the morning, three in the morning your time with Jesus and Gus arguing in the middle and in our ears and and just our big groups we would get together. You don't miss that. I love okay. that, but it was so chaotic. It was Here's so chaotic. Thing. I love the chaos. Here's my thing about like Fall Guys, like. Fall Guys is great, it, even though it had this issue at the beginning where there were like a lot of bugs and cheaters and all that. But every every time I turn around, Fall Guys just has another like sponsorship with another game, or they're adding a character from another game. Like I turn around yeah, like first Fortnite. it's 2B, then it was Kratos, then it was like a bunch of other different characters. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if flipping Glamrock Freddy was the next like skin. So a, a cool thing that Among Us has done because I kind of keep track. It's, it's hard to play when you don't have a group, but I, I've been watching and stuff. They, they're they partnering with, like, horror movies and stuff. Obviously, they had the, the hockey mask on release. Now they've, yeah. got, uh, they've got Scream merch because the new Scream movie just came out. That's sick. And, oh, and like, didn't, um, didn't Dead by Daylight recently just get, like, a thing with the rings? Seven rings, you know, seven days. Chick with the j popping out the well. I don't they like know, announced I, that she was going to be the I'm next not um sure. I actually don't play much I don't either. I don't, I've, I've actually never played Dead by Daylight period. But I, I think I, they I announced always, she's be the next flasher. I always see your sister popping on streaming that though, Vicky. Yeah, you yeah, should... she I, that's the only experience I have with Dead by Daylight is watching yeah. my sister play it. But but no, I I know they do a lot of uh horror sponsorships or or partners with horror movies and stuff. So mm -hmm. probably I I wouldn't doubt it. Um you know, and, and that's another horror game that I think everyone loves. I, uh... I've I've, had... Most of my friends who love it hate it, as do, as are most as are most online experiences out there. It's like, you got 5,000 hours. I hate this game. Yeah, but, uh... No, I, I've not touched it. I, I started, uh... I started on stream to play Alien. Um, Isolation? Yeah, Alien Isolation. That and one I, terrifies me. Well, yeah, I was, was like... Pretty intense. I, I don't know if this is good stream content because I, I don't jump scare or anything like that in scary games or movies. So I was like, I'm just oh, going to keep playing this off stream. And I've, I've played it off stream since then. Uh, I'd say you're different. I, that game terrified me every step of the way. I've been getting the biggest itch to stream, like, my... Because I've only space. played two days of Halo, like, Halo Ranked. And it's, since it's, like, my first experience, I've been getting an itch to really stream, like, my Ooh. next, like, rank grind in Halo. But, like, since I'm so new to the game series, like, I guess I've just been feeling a bit, like, a, a bit just wavy Worried. about it. Yeah, not worried. It's more like just swayed of on um, just wanting to stream it. But like every single time I pop off, like the last game that I had that I got off because it was getting late, I went like fifteen and zero. You wanna you wanna call your shot right here and announce the next time you're gonna stream? 
No, because I feel like I, I feel like it may be tonight. I don't know. Feeling I'm feeling a little Ooh. like I I'd I'd love to play some Halo with you guys. That'd be fun. Casual or ranked, I don't care. I don't play, but I I was going to reach out to you because my dad wants to play with his two friends against me and two of my friends. I was like, I'm gonna pull Vicky That's in here amazing. and just body him. I'm That's gonna pull amazing. Vicky in here and just body him because we've been I'm talking. Just like I don't even know what it is. I'm just like really good at shooters because I guess I just grew up playing shooters my entire life. I, I just not. had so much fun so far playing it. I I'm not. I've always done uh, RPGs like Pokemon stuff like that. So mm -hmm. still hasn't played Final Fantasy Nine though. I've not played through any Final Fantasy game. Other than, really? Other than what? I played really through, as a younger kid. I played through like half of Ten Two. And then my PlayStation got sold, so I was Aww. like, oh. And and now I own it, and I've been wanting to play it again, but I don't have the time because I'm a adult and I work a full-time job. I feel that. You should definitely try that. your head at least in okay. Final Fantasy VII. I yeah. That's what everyone says. It's a great game. It's, it it is. is a great you game. You can take it at your own pace, you know? It's not like you have to be playing it every single day or anything like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a classic. It's actually the reason why so many games are where they're at today. It's cre mm -hmm. essentially created a whole genre. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about Final Fantasy, and I do intend to play them, because, like, I, I own 10, 10 2, and I'll eventually own 7, uh, at least the remake. Um, but I, I, I just haven't had time to pick it up. And then Oh, I... um... Sorry. What? Go ahead. And, and Sorry. Then, and then, <laughs> Go and ahead, finish your thought, and then I'll say something. And, and when I do pick it up, uh, or when I do have time to game, I'm like, oh, there's the new Pokemon Legends Arceus game coming out that I know that I'm going to like, that I want to play through. Or I, I'm currently working on getting a shiny Living Dex, which is every single copy of every Pokemon as shiny. All three, all forms of every Pokemon. That's Good luck! Well, I'm 500 in right now. I've got really? 500 of the 898. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, but, go on and go what you were going to say now, though. Uh, but I was going to say, speaking of Final Fantasy, shout out to Italy. If you know, you know. Hey, guys. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I was hella confused about that, by the way. I was like, why is everyone telling telling me that Tifa's like out there in the Italian council? Like, what the fuck is going on, dude? <laughs> okay, should, should I explain? Should I explain? Please. Okay, oh, no. I'll explain. Oh, no. So apparently during uh, a, an Italian like Congress meeting or something, one of the what of the what are like the people there accidentally like showed people <laughs> porn on a on a Zoom call. <laughs> I was like, how do you, how do you forget to close out all your tabs before that something like that? That's actually amazing. That's, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> Also, side note, um, I just got confirmation that I apparently am needed um, because a caster dropped from Series E for Apex tonight, so I do have a cast in about an hour. Okay. okay. It, it won't be that much longer. We won't be long. We, we started at like 30, so we'll finish at 20 here and we should be good. Cool, that, cool. Yeah, that have to let them yeah, that should be enough time. Let me ask them what my call time is real quick. Okay. Right. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and pull up the next segment then. Um, oh, is it? Is it what I'm thinking? Yeah, we, we came up with this oh, new boy. idea. Or I came up with this new idea. It's my baby. I'm taking charge. And I want to see how it does. But uh, we're going to go into this new segment called Funny or Cringe, where I went through and I scrubbed all of our Twitters, all our Discord messages, and I found some <laughs> some bangers baby i'll go ahead and read them and these we'll decide as a group is this funny or is these this are cringe? these are all collective tweets from me oh zach and cash dog and oh vicky, my God. We and vicky? vicky? Yeah, we pulled Vicky in here, too. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I will probably be able to recognize mine. So, the first one here. I'll go ahead and read it the best I can. I'm lying naked on the floor, waiting for my ball racer to charge up. Is this what it's like, living alone? I... Is this what funny? What is ball or... razor? What is my ball razor? What does that mean? You know, mean? like a, a yeah. razor to shave your... Ball? Shame, oh, shame, oh. shame the family jewels, you know? Well, 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 like, it doesn't say, it's not plural ball, so is it one singular ball? Like, are, <laughs> are, are y'all okay? Like, it is there, like, a on who, It depends on who tweeted this, baby. 
<laughs> I think I think it was cat. This looks like a cash dog tweet. So let's let's first decide: is this funny or is this cringe? What do you think, this is- Drew? I'm sad I, I for say, this person. I say funny. I, 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 say, I say sad only because that sucks. Imagine having to be naked and wait for that. Like, you're cold. You're alone. Literally. You just want to move on with your life, but you can't. You what was that reality show, Naked and Afraid? <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, you're out in the wild, except you're sitting on the floor of your bathroom crying. All right. I say, I say funny. You say funny and you say sad. <laughs> um, and, and do we have an option. A, do we have a guess at who it is? It's it's between me, Vicky, Cash, and Drew. I think it was Zach. This looks like a, this looks like a Cash tweet. Okay, we'll go on to the next. We'll go on. Let me go ahead and click over. It, it, was, it, it was you. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. How did I know? Like I'm, I'm so good. I've been wilding on Twitter because I I wanted to compare oh how it is to wild on Twitter versus not and the interactions you get. You get a lot more interactions when you're wild and on Twitter. You do. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Let me go ahead and read it here. Bitch, do you not hear me trying to tell you through telepathic communication that I love you? That's how most of y'all like flirt. Just saying. That's how most of y'all flirt. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so I like that one. Vicky says funny. Drew, I say funny. Funny, it's good you said funny because this is I, a you. I, I, I think was, was that, that me? me? I, 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 was I, me? I, no, you didn't ask me, but I literally was gonna say that's Drew. I literally was gonna say that's Drew. I knew it was. Drew oh my lord, asked. that was me. I don't even remember making that tweet. <laughs> Drew, so so to give some background here. Drew used to do wild late night tweets, just <laughs> random, the most random shit. You you could I'm... catch Drew thirst tweeting, didn't matter. Me and Cash ghost wrote a fucking tweet <laughs> about Drew when we were. I'm about to go through my profile and see if I actually. Did I... I, can't... I don't remember I saying that. It. I love oh, it. Oh, I'm I'm gonna read the tweet we wrote about Drew because it, it was good. Yeah, I made that. I did make that tweet on this, August the tw- on the sixth of August two thousand twenty. <laughs> yeah, this this is not even a uh, not a part of this. But I'm gonna read this tweet because it was a banger, and Cash didn't get enough appreciation. I the tweet was <laughs> he, flipping. I miss the old King Drew, straight from the Go King Drew, the Yamcha Main <laughs> Drew. The before defame Drew. I hate the new Drew. Tweet safe and cruise <laughs> Drew. Fame, Drew. Play melty and lose Drew. Pissed at the dudes Drew. I miss the royal I... Drew. Tweets that boil Drew. I gotta say that at the time I'd like to meet Drew. See he invented 2am tweets. There wasn't any 2am tweets. And now we look and look around and there's so many 2am tweets. I used to love Drew. I used to love Drew. Who wrote this? Me and Cash, Cash dog. Me and you Cash, and Cash dog. Me and Cash wrote that shit together, baby. <laughs> I I I hate the fact that like you're you're like semi right, but oh. like, oh, first off, TikTok fame ain't changed me at all. I'm gonna let y'all know that right now. <laughs> He's got like three followers on TikTok, guys. Yeah, three followers <laughs> plus about ninety nine k. But no, like this tweet inspired that tweet. Um, so we'll, we're going to go on to the next tweet now. Bro, how did that massive hero soccer guy put the entirety of Mario, Sun, Blip, Shine into the stage and Smashy Bros? That's a Zach tweet. That's a All Zach right. tweet. For sure. My, I, I literally just got an aneurysm reading that. That, <laughs> that, I just want to yeet myself right now. What the heck? So. That's a, that's for, a cringe. That's a cringe. That's a cringe. cringe. That's a cringe. Double cringe. And and do we have guesses on who it is? It's you, Zach. That that I think it I think it's Zach. I think it's Zach. Yeah. I you guys have such little faith in me. My tweet are ba- my oh, tweets are bad. Oh, gosh, that's the one thing fucking, I assumed wrong. It's Cash Dog. Oh, fucking it was like seventy percent you, thirty percent him. In my opinion, yeah. <laughs> it was like it was a, it was a uh, okay. it was a toss up. And, and then we'll go on to the next one here, bro. I hate feet, and this is the first thing I see when I pry my eyes open today? Come on! I don't remember tweet. I don't. That doesn't sound like a tweet from me. 
Actually, no. This is a Vicky tweet, ain't it? Is it funny or cringe? I Party think it's a Vicky funny. tweet. I say, I say funny. That definitely sounds like a Vicky tweet. <laughs> like what? Funny or cringe? I'm always funny. What are you talking about? Yeah, it man. is. It is a Vicky tweet. <laughs> no. Yeah. Wait to ee, -E? bro. What was I? What I? How are we gonna just pull up this with no context when because I need to know what I'm replying to? Okay, work. no. Okay, to be fair, it is ee. -E. We all know how ee -E is. Bro, but what? What? But what feet did ee -E post or talk about? Like, I need to know here. Like, you, what for research? I, probably I'll, his. I will, it's probably his. Uh, I will find uh, it and share it with you later. Uh, cause we we do have the full image, but not in here. And I I think it was not safe for work. Oh, yeah, that sounds like E. But uh, no, what did you guys think of that segment? Fun, right? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I love it. I, I love it. Cool. I love it. I love you it. Could, you, honestly, even with more tweets up in the future, you could just do like a whole like like whole like what ten minute segment of just a bunch of random tweets. Dude, yeah, and and then there was the other idea that I shared with you guys um, before this, and that I don't really want to talk on the about on this. Um, but no, like. That was I, I thought that was fun and I, I think the other idea will be fun and I've I've got a few other ideas for the future. But no, tweets wild. Uh, and, and we've I, I kept it PG uh for this straight or for this podcast. Um but no, it it gets worse. It it gets a lot worse. <laughs> um so I'll go on to my big question for this that, that I thought would take up the most time of this podcast. Mm -hmm. As a woman in gaming, uh, you, you know, you play games competitively, you do commentary, um, and, and just all, all kinds of connected in the gaming community here. How do you think that your experience has differed if it was a, a man in your exact same position? How do you think that it's different there? Sorry, can you repeat that question again? Yeah, so so as a, a woman heavily involved in the gaming scene, how do you think that your experience um, has differ, differed than if it was a man that went through the exact same experience? Well, it's difficult to answer because I'm not a man, so I wouldn't be able to know how they would handle it if they were in my situation, since I don't really know uh, a man that has gone through the same experiences I have. But personally, for me, as a woman in a male-dominated space, what my experiences have been, it's varied. It's been very positive now that I've focused on myself entirely into branching out where I feel like um, there's a lot more respect behind what I do. People take me much more seriously now that they see how serious I I've been by expanding myself to different games kind of showing that a lot of the things that i had to go through in the smash community i don't need people there i don't need that community i don't need to just keep myself in that community after all the things that i've had to go through emotionally and and mentally just it's just it was a lot to me and i knew that the healthy outlet that i needed to do was to branch out into the game because i just never just i wasn't just playing smash brothers that was never just the case i always played multiple games at once I just needed to take that extra step to branch out. And because I was a full-time student, it was difficult to juggle one game. I can't even imagine juggling full-time school and like four games that I do currently. That'd be nearly impossible. I would never have time to myself. But as my experience goes, when it comes to being in Smash alone, it was difficult from the very start until the very end when I decided to take a break. Um, the biggest issue I had and something that I've learned throughout my casting career was to never take anything anybody says on the internet seriously. To ignore Twitch chat. I, to this very day, never read Twitch chat when I cast. And that pertains to Smash, Overwatch, and Apex. For any game that I ever cover, I will never read chat. And that is different because I see TKEE, -E, Kony, they all have chat open in real time while they cast. They have their phones in front of them while they cast. They interact with the chat while they cast. I've been, Hazmat does the same exact thing. I've been with uh, together with co-casters that could do that. And we all have fun and we play off of it. But I will never read chat because of my experiences at the start of the community, yeah. middle part of the community, and even the end before quarantine. So that is yeah. one, I 
guess, experience that would vary between myself and my male peers in that same workspace. But it was something that I had to learn early on as I started casting at 19 years old. I just finished high school and um, it was a lot. It was a lot on me mentally. And I think it has changed my personality completely. It's changed my outlook on things. It's changed my outlook on people. Um, I still sometimes deal with random things online um, when I don't even talk that much online. I'm, I usually keep my Twitter very professional um, unless I'm trying to have fun and I'm trying to be more personable with my audience. But for the most part, it's rather professional where I'm only talking about my gigs or things to look forward to or things I have plans for, whether it be a casting gig or future things in general. So that kind of is what forced me to be in the mindset that I am right now. But if anything, I'm thankful for that because it taught me how to be professional within the first year of me casting and wanting to understand like, oh, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to do this and I love doing it. So what can I do to make sure that I could keep this going for as long as I can? Yeah, and, and then like, I know we've talked about uh, like all kinds of targeted harassment that you've received and, and things like that, literally just for existing as a woman in the gaming community. Social media is ridiculous. Um, and I think a lot of people understand that. It's, I mean, it's the side of the other coin too, where um, it's also a lot, like a lot of positivity has come out of um, the way that mob culture has worked around social media, but also a lot of negativity too, because you have a lot of people feeling that adrenaline that they get for trying to attack another person. I have once tweeted about how nice the weather was in South Florida, and I had a handful of people attack me saying that there were people freezing to death in Texas. How could I talk about how nice the weather is in South Florida at the time when it was snowing in Texas? And I, at that point, was like, I wasn't sure what I was doing wrong. It seemed like everything I was doing, even talking about the weather at that point, had an issue. So, I, I you know, I don't see that type of behavior towards my other peers um, when it comes to simple subjects like that now when my peers decide to walk on a very thin line that's their decision but when it comes to things like the weather and someone's comparing it to people freezing to death i mean to me that comparison uh draws close to me <laughs> never tweeting a picture of my food that i made at the dinner table because there's people starving to death around the other side of the world yeah i mean you yeah should, you should just learn how to you know control the weather make sure everyone has food you know that that's your job being in the being a public figure, right? I, I need to bring world peace. Like, that is my job, obviously, because I just simply have a pe minimum presence, I would say, on social media in comparison to the very successful and amazingly talented people that I've been able to work with throughout the last two years. Yeah, so, right. like, when can we expect that world peace? I'm just going to jot it down here, you know. Um, uh, I guess at the same time that my stream starts, so. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Self-roast? <laughs> good one. Good one. <laughs> that was good. That was good. But no, like, it's it's unreasonable to, A, expect someone to, that's like saying you can't tweet unless you're tweeting about business. And even when you do that, you'll have people comment and say, oh, you're a shitty caster, or you've got a boy's voice, or this or that. And I, I think that's insane. Right. You know, if, if I picked up casting tomorrow and, and you know, blew up on it, I would never get those type of comments ever. And I think that's crazy. You know, but at this point, since I've been doing it for so long, it, it kind of feels like it's it comes with a job. And something that I've told to casters that are trying to seek out advice, what they could do differently and stuff like that. The first thing I tell them is one, don't ever read Twitch chat. Don't, just don't, don't even just don't do don't, that. Don't do it. Don't care about what other people say. What you need to do is reach out to their, to your peers. Like you're reaching out to me and figure out what you could do better in commentary because the randoms online don't know what commentating is. They don't know what it brings. They don't know the pressures behind it. They don't know your approach towards it. They don't know why you can't be biased towards some people who are clearly better than the other player they don't know any of that they don't understand because i've been doing this for a long time now and it just it comes with a job like having to and it sucks to say that but having thick skin you have to mold into that you have to mold in yourself into that because if you don't you're not gonna last very long in, in casting or being a public figure ever because which, that we are in an era right now where public figures will be criticized when necessary which is amazing we're not letting people slide with with anything but you have to deem what's important or what's not, or else everything gets co co convoluted together and everything becomes, if everything is wrong, then there's nothing wrong. Yeah, which I mean, right. 
You shouldn't be... I, I will say it this way. You shouldn't be forced to have thick skin because people can't hold their homies accountable, you know? Right, call, I was about to say that. Call your friends on their bullshit when they're harassing someone, man, woman, whatever. Call them on their bullshit because that's yep. not okay. Good talk. Unacceptable. I agree. And, and I know um, that we've agree. said this three episodes now in a row that you need to hold your homies accountable. But it's really a big issue. Right. It, it, it's insane to me. And, like, <clears throat> you've got, like, the Pokimane situation that happened this week where yeah. she was harassed, oh called out her harasser, and got harassed worse. Yeah. That she got threatened to be sued. She got threatened to be sued, bro. Like, For exposing that, so stupid. her harasser. That poor girl. That, that's another example, actually. You see, this is not a caster. She's a content creator. She's not a right. She's doing what she loves. And she, there's literally, I feel like it's like a holiday where once a year, it's like, or maybe, I feel like it's twice a year at this point where it's like, all right, guys, uh, Pokemon successful. Time to harass her for absolutely no reason. No, I'm, I'm like, going to say why, the line. But why is that? Do we see that? Do we see that with people like Moist Critical? Do we see that with people like, I don't even know. Like, Ludwig. I don't see that with Ludwig. I don't see that with Ludwig. I don't, uh, I don't. I this don't. guy's toast who, who makes it. He, I don't see he, that with other with yes. other people in general. I don't. And right. I, I, I think that's very sus. It's and it's crazy because a lot of these people that do this, that that harass women, like women, want to be with a woman someday. This is not that kind of behavior. It, it takes me back to my favorite quote. She not gonna fuck you, bro. The I I think before you say anything to a, a a woman online or anything, you say, would I say this to my mother? Would I say this to my sister? Would my family be disappointed if they found out I said this shit online? And then if the answer is no to the first two or yes to the other one, don't say that shit. It's easy. Right. I mean, it shouldn't even have to be, come down to be dictated by your, by your mother or sister. You should know... How to talk to a person properly. But if you're curious, if you wouldn't say it to your mom, don't say it to a woman online. It's Exactly. Uh, don't. But no, I, I mean, from an outsider's perspective, we've talked about some of the harassment you've received. We, I've seen some DMs, things like that. It's unreasonable and wild that just because you talk about a video game that you enjoy, you get treated like that. Right. I think there's a there's a clear difference between constructive criticism and being able to speak your mind and think that you trying to ratio or like roast somebody online because you get that little those little tingly sensations to roast somebody and feel proud of yourself for doing it. I think there's a there's a, a big line between the both because I think it's valid for people to have their opinion and for people to have constructive criticism if they could list the things that they just do not like about an individual or the way that they work. Just like you could say clearly on social media i don't like that artwork you know what that's great that you don't like that artwork. certain artwork will not you know cater towards certain people it's okay to have a taste in what you like now the way that you deliver that message is the way that that's going to come across to the other person so if somebody is doing their line of work and you do not like it to shit on them in the way that you want to shit on them is different than providing constructive criticism to them maybe have a much more enjoyable experience whether it be looking at art on the tl whether it be listening to your favorite esport with the casters it all varies and if you want to help people help you then everybody in total has a great time now if you don't know how to go about that then maybe that shit should stay in the drafts well and hey man some people just want to be mean for no reason unfortunately yeah, I, and, and i think if you're criticizing something a good rule for criticism is if the person can change that in like five minutes then it's something that's kind of okay to criticize usually like I, i'm gonna use you as an example because it's really easy you're right here and you can say yeah this has happened People criticize you for your voice. Something that you have no way to ever change. I'm sorry, you're talking about her or me because I get criticized for my voice too. <laughs> I'm, talking about I, I'm, I'm probably Vicky. Uh, you know, they, they, can, they criticize you for your voice that you can't change. But they could say something along the lines of, oh, the way you inflect when you're saying this kind of makes it sound aggressive. That is something that you could change your inflection on your voice and make it sound more passive. 
not that I think that that's something anyone's ever criticized or anything like that, but that that is something you could change versus your voice that you could never change. Something that that could be a, that, that that is awareness brought to somebody that they could keep in mind when it comes to portraying a message or the way that they deliver their their casting. <clears throat> so yeah. absolutely, I can't do anything about my voice. People think that I fake my voice. This is my voice. Like there's nothing I could do to change this. If anything, my my voice gets hoarse very easily. It's very sensitive. So the longer casting sessions I have, the the rougher it's strain and the more strain that it puts into my voice. <clears throat> But when it comes to my accent and like all this other stuff, because I've heard that I have an accent, I I, I, I want people to understand, um, especially when it comes to pronunciation too. English was not my first language. It was Spanish, but people don't know that. Um, I'm Cuban. I'm Cuban American. Oh. So, so yeah. So when people are like, she pronounces everything wrong or like when, especially when it came to certain Overwatch names, the, the primary players that make a professional Overwatch are Korean. We have a lot of Korean Chinese players on that team. Right. If you get somebody who doesn't speak a lick of English that come from Latin American countries and you throw them in Korea and you're like, hey, say these names. I want to hear the results of that. I want to. Yeah. Because, because little things like that, people never keep in mind. What's her background? Where does she come from? But in general, when it comes to stuff like that, I've been able to be more self-aware and work on the things that I could do, like approaching my notes, like writing abbreviations on how to say names correctly. Because somebody else, I went, I reached out to other players and I go, hey, how do you say this? Or hey, I wanna make sure I say this properly. Why don't you tell me how you say it? I've, do I've gone the extra mile to ensure that I could pronounce these names pr correctly. I reach out to my peers who also get to cast the same teams or who cast the same players or, or are good friends with these players. To ensure, like, the one name that I love, and they're from my region, Anathema. Anathema. I've been calling Anathema Anathema to their face for so long, and they never corrected me. I had to reach out to five different people from South Florida who all said that they didn't know. So I was like, this is so funny. But it happens. It happens. So when I hear that that's a gripe that maybe certain players have an issue with, guess what? I ensure that the next time around, the next time that I have the opportunity to cast this player, that I will be able to cast their name in the way that they want to. So I reach out to them personally. I DM Smash players all the time about what their goal is for this tournament. Um, if I have an issue with their name, how would they like their name to be pronounced? Um, what are they going to do differently? I ask and I interview players on an individual basis for my own knowledge so that way I could be the bridge between the stream and the player because it also ensures that that player, if they're a free agent, has sponsorship opportunities in the future. Yeah. So, all right. All right. One thing I want to compliment you on that, that uh, I've not heard anyone say, but I, I think is a really cool thing. I notice, and, and I'm sure other people notice too, that when you don't know how a player identifies, you always use gender, okay. gender neutral pronouns. You use they, they, them. And, and mm -hmm. I think you're a very inclusive caster uh, versus some people that just assume. I think that's awesome. I appreciate that. I, I do do that. that. Was, that was something very important that I actually took away from casting Overwatch contenders. My peers and I did that together. It was all of us that made that decision because we thought it was important. And we also, it, we do now get the doc where we figure out, like we have an amazing production when we were doing contenders last year. Um, where they made sure that they provided us a doc before every monthly tournament that had the that that had the pronouns involved in them that had the mains that they're going the compositions that they're looking for little individual things that the players wanted to make note on because everybody's a clown and everybody likes to have their own personality kind of speed through the broadcast so that was something that I took away that I wanted to implement in my own commentary for other games yeah which I think that's great and and obviously. I watched a lot of Overwatch uh, contenders when you casted. I, I don't care much for Overwatch myself, but like I, I support my homies. You know, that's what you do. Uh, so I, I watched a lot, and I noticed that, and then I noticed you bring it back to Smash, and then I've, I've watched a few Apex things, and I've noticed it there. <coughs> and I, I think the the more wide implementation is good because I, I think something a lot of gamers tend to lack is. Um, is that uh, class with with those type of things that they don't understand? So I, I think making it a standard by hearing all the commentators say it, and then it starts dripping down to the players using it. I, I think it makes a better community. Yeah, a so, like she's better at like translating 
competitive to sort of casual talk in a sense. I think that's is that what you're trying to say? No, 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 no. Like implementing changes in the community, like using gender ah, pronouns. Okay, the, all right. But but in a sense that as well because Vicky and and the other commentators are a uh, a bridge between the casual and competitive people. The new yeah. the new casuals that are going to come in and become competitive will have started listening to commentators and things like that and learn from them and and become informed that way. And I, I think that's... You have to have good people as commentators because then it builds a better community. Right. I agree. But no, uh, I think we're, we're coming near the end time here. So I'm going to leave with uh, one last question for Vicky. I want you to rank all 898 Pokemon in your order from favorite to least favorite. What the heck? Hold on. Hold on. This no. will take me a bit. I need to study. Okay. I, 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 can, I, I, could, I could do that. Uh, jo jokes aside. <laughs> all right. Top, number one, Piplup. So top top that, three. That, let's, let's get your top three. Not the Pokemon. Oh, top three. Okay, okay. Piplup. Gardevoir. We know why and... Gardevoir is her favorite. Hold on. Right? I ain't gonna speak on that. Ayo, <laughs> ayo, hey hey hold you're, on. You're missing um, one. I, I... Um, hold on, because this is important, because I'm stuck between, like, three. Can I make a guess at who the third one is? Yeah, you can make a guess. Chikorita. I was gonna say Lopany. It actually, it actually... It's Chikorita? It is Chikorita. That's actually crazy. Let's go. I love I... Chikorita. People, people clown on Chikorita so hard, but, like, Chikorita was my favorite starter when I was a kid, and then then diamond and pearl came out and like i was like oh my god my favorite animal is a starter i'm so happy and then yeah so who's buying legends Arceus uh this friday oh i'm not gonna be able to buy it this friday but i'll buy it sometime soon Yo. yeah i'm gonna get it if i don't get it this friday i'm also gonna get it soon too there's just so many games on my backlog that i i feel always so guilty getting a game when i have so many other I, games i i just keep pushing them back i just keep pushing them back <laughs> You, it's like it's like me with my anime list. We we had Diamond and Pearl remakes come out, and I was like pushing it back. And then Legends Arceus two months later, I'm like pushing them back. Anyways, right. that's the end of this podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time here, Vicky. Uh, you want to shout yourself out? Yeah, um, you guys could follow me at Vicky Kitty, V I K K I K I T T Y on Twitter as well as Twitch. Again, I know I say it, but I actually do have a lot of big plans coming up soon in this We've year. We've been talking it's, about it. it. Yeah, it's it's gonna be fantastic. You'll see just in a few months what I'm talking about. But I just need to get the Ooh. ball rolling. So why not get started now? Shortly. That's why I've been getting that itch recently. So you guys could find me at Vicky Kitty also on Instagram. So Shout out Instagram, to YouTube. <laughs> at Vicky Kitty too on YouTube so youtube.com slash Vicky Kitty all spelled the same all the same brand across the board across all different social media but I had a lot of fun doing this too I think talking about this stuff is super important but also having fun is the most important thing here too because you know it's gaming it's a gaming space and everyone should feel happy and safe in this space like this we're all goons and, and we're all shitheads here we, we just yeah. have to have fun and, and have a good conversation uh, yeah and, and then to close out the podcast here, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If we get to 100 subscribers by the end of February, I will get Vicky back on the podcast. I thought you were about to say something else. I was about to be like, um, no, certainly and, be out of this. <laughs> and, and we've got a lot of uh, a lot of guests lined up already. And mm -hmm. If we get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of February, I'm going to make Drew open an OnlyFans. So I'm sorry, you what? I, I want you all to have a great week, month, year, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys!